He talked about salt before. Talk about the importance of that. Is it just for taste or are you getting certain minerals through that or electrolytes? And talk about quality. Does that matter? Because there's, you know, classic table salt and then there's these different sea salts and Mm -hmm. all different stuff out there these days. So the importance of salt for health and how much does quality matter? Okay. You need a certain amount of salts, electrolytes in your body that do various different roles. If your body drops below that level of those electrolytes, then its function becomes impaired in some way, to some level, up to and including death. You can die very, very quickly from having insufficient electrolytes. The same is true as if you have too many electrolytes in your body. That can just as quickly cause you dysfunction up to and including death. Example... I have personally stopped a number of hearts from beating in one of my professional career lines that I did for a while as a younger man. I used to be the bloke in operating theatres for open heart surgery that would push the button to stop the heart so the surgeon could do the heart surgery on the heart-lung trans um, bypass machine. The drug that we use to stop a person's heart from beating The drug is hypertonic potassium. That's all it is. Water with potassium ions dissolved in it. Pump in hypertonic potassium into someone's body and that will stop their muscles from contracting, including the heart. So that's one way that that you can do that. Luckily... In the normal course of events, people don't consume anything like that kind of level of potassium or any of the other electrolytes that can cause various problems. You will take in generally a small amount, which your genetics are programmed to seek out for taste. That's why you. That's why that stuff tastes good, because you're supposed to get it. Um, but you'll find that putting too much salt on something makes it in- inedible, doesn't it? You don't want that anymore. Putting too much salt in your water makes it undrinkable. You wouldn't do that. So again, it's your instincts looking after you, telling you what you do need. Um, There are many, many indications that ancient humans used to find salt licks around the place. Take them home and um, 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 right now let's eat this meat, whatever. And then thought, oh, maybe we should smash it up smaller and sprinkle it. Well, that works too. Now we have grinders that do the same thing. But a lot of people are saying, oh, adding salt to our food is a modern thing. Absolute nonsense. No, it isn't. Rubbish. <laughs> people say all sorts of things that suit their ideology, don't they? It's, uh, yeah. So you absolutely need a certain level of salt in your diet to maintain the right level. You also need good, healthy, functioning kidney tissue that basically maintains the level of those things by pumping ions across membrane both into and out of urine so that you've got the right amount in your blood and um, you've got the instinct of wanting it for taste that's too much it, 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 it's you know, it's almost as if humans have been evolving and living and doing reasonably well on the planet for 350,000 years and more like four and a half million in species very similar to our current speciation but not quite yet human we've been doing it a long long time in terms of quality, really, there, there are really only three major electrolytes that exist in a human body in enough concentration that you would need to worry about it per se. Sure, a person can get deficiencies on some of the very much more trace minerals and things, Um. In which case, on a case-by-case basis, if a person shows signs of that and we can identify that there is a shortage of that, then we might supplement with that mineral and probably do some stuff to help them with their kidney function and whatever else to maintain that as well. But the three most important are sodium, potassium, and chloride. So if you take in sodium chloride, table salt, and Epsom salt, 
in a much smaller amount, by the way. So maybe three or four to one in terms of the ratio of sodium chloride to Epsom salt. You're covered in terms of the major ones. If you want to make sure you've got all sorts of other things in your body as well at various trace tiny amounts, you might go for something like Celtic or Celtic salt sometimes. Sometimes pink Himalayan salt people use as well. You also need to be aware, however, that there can also be things in those kind of salts that you don't want in your body. Heavy metals, for example, and other toxins as well. Um, How do you feel about iodine in a typical table salt? Well, the table salt, I don't know about elsewhere, but in New Zealand, table salt is universally iodized. Here as well, I believe. Okay. So you take in standard table salt and a very small amount of Epsom salt relative to that. You can even mix it up in the same salt shaker if you like so that it's that's what you're getting. You're going to be covered. And it would be a rare occurrence for you to get an electrolyte disturbance even rarer if you're actually doing the right things by your body, i.e. eating once a day and not three or four times a day, eating food for a human being and not things that are not food for human beings. And that, that's the major parts of that battle won, basically. But if somebody were to do that using iodized salt, would they have to worry about the iodine becoming a problem? Well, for the most part, additional or excess electrolytes can be passed out to the urine at the kidney, thus it exits the body and doesn't accumulate. You have to have one of the major ones out of whack. Now, absolutely, you can get one of the major ones out of whack, knock on effect by getting one of the minor ones out of whack, like copper, for example, that's one we talked about earlier. I'm not aware of there being a significant prevalence or problem with carnivore folks taking an iodized table salt, getting any problem with you know, iodine toxicity. Okay. I'm just curious, being fortified and all, and just depending on how much salt somebody's taking in. I'm not aware of anyone that's, that's had a problem. If there is somebody out there that's had a problem with iodine poisoning, please let me know. I want to hear about it. I'll, I'll interview you and we'll get to the bottom of it. That'll be awesome. But I just don't know of anyone that has had that. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Insulin resistance is a normal, natural, indicated and useful biological process. It is not a pathology and it is not the cause of diabetes. The diet that these so-called scientists